A new round of spyware dubbed Hermit has been infecting Android and iOS phones, but this spyware is a lot more sophisticated than many of the other ones that you would see in the wild because it includes a form of social engineering to trick people into downloading it that, well, a lot of people are falling for because frankly, it's something that involves a lot of corruption that most threat actors are not able to pull off. Because the thing that makes Hermit so dangerous is the fact that governments are mostly the ones that are using it against their citizens. So far, government associates in Kazakhstan and Syria have been found deploying the spyware to people's phones in order to spy on them. And even in Italy, the authorities there misused it on an anti-corruption operation. They got carried away with their newfound spyware powers. But Hermit is able to do much more than just spy on you. It actually gains root access to people's devices and it's capable of remote code execution with those root privileges. So it completely pones your device. You really can't get anything worse than restricted, unrestricted RCE. And the steps to get it on the victim's phones, like I said, are probably the most sinister. So in the case of its use in Kazakhstan, the victim's phone would get its cellular service temporarily restricted, basically just blocking its access to all of the internet, except for the servers that are hosting this malware for them to download it. And then when the user realizes that there's a problem and they can't reach the internet, they can't make calls or get text messages, they all of a sudden will get a text appearing to be from their ISP or their phone manufacturer to download an application or a patch that is supposed to restore the service. So this is a pretty common thing that we see with malware, not necessarily the ISP cutting off your service, because of course that's typically something we only see when governments are deploying malware. But the social engineering aspect of creating a sense of urgency. So all of a sudden your phone doesn't work. You can't join your virtual business meeting or watch a girl dancing on TikTok. And then the panic kicks in. Oh, you're thinking, oh man, how am I going to fix this? And then all of a sudden, this text message comes in as if it's sent by an angel saying, oh, just download this app or download this patch to fix it. And because you're in this frustrated emotional state, your logic is compromised, which leads to your phone getting compromised as well. So here's an example of the kind of site that the text message would send uh, the users in Kazakhstan to. And the ISP that colluded with the Kazakh government to do this was STS Telecom. So I don't know if those of you watching in Kazakhstan, if you really have a choice of ISP or if it even matters, maybe all of them are corrupt, uh, but STS Telecom, they definitely are. Uh, to the average person that gets this text message telling them to go to this site, this would look like a legitimate support site for their phone. But this was a fake one run by STS Telecom. And we know that because they misconfigured their proxy for this web server and its true IP was revealed, which belongs to them. So be on your guard when things are suddenly going wrong on your device, because usually downloading an app is not going to be the way to fix a no service issue like this. If the device once worked, then chances are everything that you need to get it working again is there already on your phone, unless maybe you rooted your phone and you uninstalled some critical service that's necessary for Android to run. Or I guess there's also the possibility of the feds using a stingray against you. Uh, that way they can just intercept all of your communications and then they can block them or they can make them forward to wherever they want them to go. Uh, in that case, you're going to have to look around the block for a black van that is parked near you with a suspicious glow coming from it. Now, this hermit spyware is believed to be developed by RCS Lab and Tyke Lab, which are both Italian companies. Now, RCS Lab, it's very obvious that this is a company that sells, you know, develops and sells spyware 
to law enforcement, okay? It tells us right here, RCS has been providing law enforcement agencies worldwide with cutting edge technological solutions and technical support in the field of lawful interception for more than 20 years. So that's basically corporate speak for, hey, we work with the cops to help them hack your shit and break into your shit. Uh, they're really not that much different than NSO Group, who you might remember, they infamously created the Pegasus malware that could take over a uh, devices that were vulnerable to it at least just by sending them a text message. So really, really serious stuff that these companies are making. Um, now, Tyke Lab, on the other hand, it's not very obvious that this is a company that develops spyware for governments, okay? So based on their website, they appear to just be a regular run-of-the-mill telco company, right? If we look at their about page, the world is ever-changing, ICT is increasingly pervasive, and high-speed connections are one of the most important drivers for development. Tyke Lab, in this context, is the Italian company that combines 20 years of experience in the design, implementation, and maintenance of core network telco solutions. So. Pretty generic, right? Well, one of the SSL certificates that was used with the Hermit spyware, it had RCS listed as the organization name, and it had Tyke Lab issued as the organization unit. So clearly, these two companies were working together, they were sharing SSL certificates with one another, and to add to the suspicion, Tyke Lab's website, tykelab.it, doesn't even have an SSL certificate right now. Perhaps it's because the same one that they were using for their actual website, they were also using for Hermit Spyware, and they haven't been able to get a new one yet. Now, obviously, there's a lot of companies that develop and sell spyware and malware to governments. I mean, when you think about how these things are used in military operations, for example, it only makes sense that the government is going to want them. And if you're the kind of person that knows how to develop spyware and malware that is undetectable and can get root RCE on devices, that's something people are gonna to pay top dollar for. And who can pay more dollars than the people who print the dollars? But the problem is, when these companies are selling to governments, there is no guarantee that the government isn't going to do anything malicious with it. In fact, I personally think it's more likely that the government would do something malicious because you've got to assume if they're reaching out to a third party to buy malware from them, that means that they've already tried everything they can do. They've The FBI, the NSA, or the CIA, whoever is developing the malware, it wasn't sufficient enough for catching their target, and now they need to go above and beyond. Now, yes, I'm sure that some of the targets of this malware are actual bad guys, but the thing about bad guys as well, they tend to do illegal things very often. And every time you break the law, that's an opportunity for you to get them versus using some kind of sneaky malware to find them. Like take Al Capone, for example. Back in the day, he seemed to be untouchable. Even though he was a mobster, he was paying off cops. He was spending a lot of money to stay out of trouble. The feds knew that he was up to new good, but they couldn't prove anything. So that's why they got him a tax fraud, which is also illegal. But when it comes to activists or political dissidents, it makes sense that the government, instead of using, you know, pursuing them via legal means, because they might not even be breaking the law if they have a right to protest, instead, the government would just install some spyware on their phones, and then that way you can keep track of them, and maybe you can even plant some illegal data or suspicious data on their phone and then conveniently have the cops ready to arrest them. Like if we take a look at some of these specific modules that Hermit has, which are just different functions that do a very specific task and they can easily be operated by the end user that's controlling this malware. Because remember, this is malware that's being developed and sold to the government. And malware like it is generally gonna be very user-friendly for the person who's uh, you know using it against the victim, right? Even a script kitty could pwn you with this. But they allow you to do things like access the victim's camera, record audio, take over the browser, and boom, right there, file upload. 
what a better way to take care of a journalist that you don't like than to just, I don't know, put pictures of a dead guy, someone that just got murdered on their phone and then claim that that's evidence that they committed the murder. Now, look, I get that these kinds of programs, they have been, they might have been used at one point in time to catch bad people, but let's be real. You're selling this to Kazakhstan and Syria. What's really going to happen with it? Like, I really wish I could have listened into that call with the Syrian government officials and a sales rep from RCS. It must have gone like, hello, I would like to buy some of your best spyware. Okay, but you got a pinky promise us not to violate people's humans rights with this and only use it on bad guys. Ah, yes, yes, only the bad guys. And then Syria proceeds to round up critics of their regime with it. So you got to be really careful, guys, about what software you're installing on your phone, especially when you're getting messages that seem somewhat legit. In fact, that's probably when you should be at your highest alert when things seem almost legit is actually when they are the most sus. Like I said, you run into a problem on your device and it was working at one point, you probably have everything you need to get it working again, already installed. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.